Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO. Free, impartial advice on all your debt. This is Coom Cassis for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. We're in Morecambe, the home of uh, Mr. Tyson Fury. Delighted to be joined by Mr. Tommy Fury. Tommy, how are you? I'm good. I'm not too bad. Um, just training, training, and training. Nothing much, no, nothing, nothing to do. Is it? It's camp life, isn't it? You know, you, you come to the gym, you come back, and then you just doing this. I obviously caught your session today. Your uh, you are your second session there. I was at your strength conditioning today in Liverpool, but um, seeing you work with your dad today, it does seem like you kind of you're maturing in terms of power and speed. It seems to be kind of all working for you at the moment as you're developing still. Yeah, it's all um, it's all coming together now. Um, every day I come in the gym, you know, I've got Sugar there, I've got Tyson there, I've got my dad there, and it's a perfect team for me to do well. So all I've got to do is knuckle down and listen, which I am doing. You know, I'm 21 years old. I'm living, you know, in a camp. I'm away from home, away from all the distractions, so there's nothing more in my own head that I could possibly do. You know, I'm living here like it's a world title fight, and it's, it's a sixth round at the start of my career. You know, I'm, I'm doing everything by the book right, and that's how, that's how it's got to be, you know. Um, this boxing, you got it's all or nothing, and I'm going to give it my best shot. I'm going to leave no stone unturned, so every time I get in there, I know in my own head that I've done it all. I suppose when you come out of... Um... Love Island people automatically would kind of question, yeah. like how serious is Tommy going to be about boxing yeah. now because he's had that kind of life as well. But yeah. you was always insistent is that your your main thing isn't like a TV reality star. You are a professional boxer. Well, that's it. You know, obviously you know yourself. Before any of that stuff happened, I was in the gym every day. I was I was training. <laughs> you were fifteen. I was fifteen. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, no. You know what I, mean? I was I was sparring big events. Time Tyson Spire partners everybody. Um, but I just hope it's shown to people now how serious I am about it because I could have easily gone down that other road, that, that easy road of not really doing anything, getting you know money for posting a picture up and doing whatnot. That's that's the easy road. But I said to myself as soon as I got out there, I don't want to live a life, you know, an easy life. I want to work hard for something and at the end of it I want to sit down and be happy with it because I knew for a fact if I continued with that way of life, I wouldn't be happy in 20 years' time. Mm. I'd be sitting there... <laughs> I'd be sitting there and I'd be thinking to myself you know what have you done I've sat on an island for two months done absolutely nothing come out took a few pictures and that's it but boxing I want, I want to go down history I want to win titles and I want to you know fulfil my dreams and that's being a world champion and I've always said that from being 15 years old and I'm still on that path now six years later and I intend to do so mm. and with having a dad like yours as well yeah. who would always remind you of what you already know anyway in terms of that, wouldn't he? Yeah, for sure, definitely. You know, it's it's good having my dad around because every day, you know, he kind of reinstates that goal in your head. You know, this is why we're here, this is why you're doing it. Do this, do that. You know, it's it's nice, it's good because sometimes, you know, after training gets a bit repetitive, you know, you wake up, you go to the gym, you come back, it can be the same thing. But when you constantly know why you're doing it and why you're here, you know, just it makes it makes you train harder. The motivation stays there. It's it's not hard at all. I got many messages all day, every day, asking me how do I stay motivated. You know, when I could easily go off and do other things, and I say because once you know what you want, it's very easy. And I I truly believe that in anything that you do. Absolutely. So, as regards for a fight date for you, is it is one pending? Are we going to hear an announcement? Yes. Yeah. Um. Yeah, definitely one pending. I um, can't really say too much because it's not been announced or anything like that, but definitely keep your eyes peeled and when I get back in this ring, there's going to be some serious damage going on because I've been training for about six months now, every single day. I just want to get out there and show people what I can do because ever since I started boxing, my first two fights, you know, one was in December, the other one was in March, and then I went in there, that broke things up, then I had a fight in December, and now all of a sudden it's ten months since that. It's not been flowing. So now when I get back in the ring this time, there ain't going to be no long layoffs. There ain't going to be no, you know, 10-year gaps in between doing other things. I'm going to be fighting regularly, you know, match fit, matched right. I'm just getting better and better. Hmm. Um, I do want to ask your opinion on 
the whole Floyd Mayweather and Logan Paul yeah. story. I don't know how serious it is at the moment because we've not heard anything kind of concrete as far as I know. But what is your thoughts on, on that? It's I don't know. I mean, Floyd, for starters, in his career, he's, you can't take anything away from him. He is one of my favourite fighters and many others. You know, in the, for me, in the top five greatest to ever do it. He's earned his stripes. He's done whatever he's done. You know that was his boxing career. But I'm not being funny. If I was Floyd Mayweather, and somebody said, "Do you want to fight a YouTuber?" Before I can't even tell you how much money that that's going to generate. You're damn right. Yeah, of course. Why wouldn't you be a fool not to? You know, some people are saying, "Is it going to tarnish his legacy?" Not really, because I I seen his legacy stop. You know, before the McGregor fight, that was his legacy over. You know, these fights now, they're sort of like gimmicky fights that we all know he can win. But the Logan Paul fight, you know, it, if it makes money, it makes sense. And you, you hear that so many times, and I'm sorry, but for the millions and millions and hundreds of millions that's going to regenerate, you'd be a fool not to take it. Why wouldn't you when it's easy money for him? But I'm not sure how they're going to do it, because one fella's a heavyweight, and the other one's a welterweight. So I'd, I don't know. I don't know. But, I, I listen, I, I tend to agree with... If something sells, there's a market for it, yeah. then it should happen. But then you've got boxing purists, and I was talking to your dad about it, who's like absolutely like, you know, for the for the love of boxing, ahead of things yeah. like social media numbers, even pay per view, yeah. etc. It's like because a lot of listen, a lot of fights would sell if you pitch someone like that against someone of like course. that. But for, as in terms of a spectacle, should it be happening? Yeah, yeah, because. The one thing that I always say, you know, after it's all said and done, and you fought your fights, you've had your career, the boxing purists are going to move on to the next. You know, they're always going to be there. The boxing purists ain't gonna, they ain't gonna pay the bills. You know, they ain't gonna be around forever. You know, money's hard to get out there. You know, in today's world, so if you've got a platform to get that type of money, use it because you don't know what is around the corner tomorrow. And if I'm not going to take a fight for hundreds of millions of pounds because a boxing purist says to me that this fight is not a proper boxing fight or whatever. I'm not going to care about this man's opinion if you're slapping two, three hundred million dollars in front of me. I don't, I don't care what Steve of the Glasses says. On. I don't care. I want to fight. Well, it's not even a fight. It's easy money for him. So to secure my kids' future, give him a better life. Of course, I'm going to do that. Mm. I, and it's not the same. It's like where I suppose fights take place in places like Saudi Arabia yeah. and, and abroad because financially for fighters it's a lot more beneficial yeah. and that's not quite the same thing but the fighters yeah. probably thinking yes we would like to have like you, your, your brother's fight with, with AJ is a typical yeah. example like yeah. yes of course I'd be devastated if that fight don't happen here please yeah. let's get it right like we all would yeah but financially for them if they can earn them like a lot lot more money elsewhere who, who is me or you to say that's what I'm that saying. shouldn't happen and I know people's arguments are going yeah. well how much money do you want well I don't know I'm not in that position exactly you know I mean? I'm not yeah. in that position to I'd like to be in that position where I'm not oh, listen I'm getting 50 million there I can get 100 million there but let me go with the 50 million because 50 yeah. million is enough I'd like to be in that position I'm not but you know well that's the thing isn't it it's like boxing is too hard of a game do you know what I mean when you fight and you've gone through training camp you've done the best that you can and you want to reap the rewards, you, you want to get as much as you can out of it because boxing is too hard to do for free. Now, when you're talking about fights like Tyson and Joshua, that fight there would engross so much, but let's just say, I don't know, 10 million a piece, right? That is not chump change. That's life-changing money. Mm. But when you're talking about this, this type of fights, you want to get the most out of it. So if, oh, if I was in their position and somebody said to me, right, you can have the fight, you get paid 10 million a piece, you can have it in Wembley, London, no problem. Or you can go to Saudi Arabia and get 100 million a piece. What do you want to do? You tell me, what do I want to do? Where do I sign? And that's just the way it is. But if you applied it to most people in whatever position or whatever job they do. I guarantee it, I put everything I have down, yeah, that if you said to anybody on this planet, yeah, fighters, non fighters, Wall Street people, McDonald's people, yeah. Do you want to go and flip a burger in McDonald's in London and get paid £4 an hour? Or do you want to go and flip a burger in Saudi Arabia and get paid £100 an hour? What are they going to do? The, everyone's going to make yeah, that financial move. If you apply context like that, then... Of course, yeah. No. Everybody's going to do the same thing. Because you'd be stupid not to. It's the only sport, like, really, that people actually care about 
yeah. kind of purses and what people are earning, etc. Yeah. And I know football to a certain degree they do, but boxing's like it's different. You know, isn't it? It's even in football, they're on, they're on mad salaries a week and everything like that. But a big fight, you know, it's it's like Floyd May- Floyd Mayweather got three hundred million pound in one night, one night's work. You know, I mean, everybody's intrigued to see how that what that man's doing, what he's earning. You, you just are. Yeah. Like no matter who you are, you want to see this man fight. How much do you get paid for that? You that's the question you automatically ask. Yeah. And it's just the way it is. Mm. We'll see how that pans out anyway. I'm not sure how much legs this has, but uh, it wouldn't surprise me in today's world. It wouldn't surprise me. Stranger things have happened, hasn't it? Absolutely. Um you've been obviously in camp now with, with Sugar as well, who's here. Yeah. Uh, he's been here for a couple of weeks, he will be here for a little while. Um, how have you seen kind of that relationship blossoming between your brother and Sugar? Good, yeah. Like I say, I mean, they've only had their one fight together. Um, but you can see after that one fight that they just gel like this. You know, well, that's probably not a good example. But they gel like this. Um, and they both understand, understand each other. You know, Tyson trusts him. You know, he trusts Tyson. So it's a good match. And when I see him working, you know, in the gym every day, it's you can just see that it fits right and all the stuff that Sugar's telling Tyson to do, it fits well and it's the right sort of stuff that he needs to be learning. And he's, you know, he's on fire. He looks like he's going to fight this week in the gym. And that's, that's just him down to a T, isn't it? He, he treats this like no other. You know, he, he's training all the time, 24-7. And for a big man to get out on the road every single day, repetitive, you know, five, six, seven, eight, ten miles a day, mm. it takes world championship material to do that. And that's why he is where he is. But him and Sugar, I believe, I've always said it, they're going to reign at the top for however they want to. You know, there's, no, there's, there's nobody out there to beat them or even give them a test, in my opinion. And that's just the way it is. Mm. You dropped him the other day, didn't you? I see some footage of you. Yeah, I'm still waiting for my belt. The WBC are uh, they're taking liberties at the minute. They said it was coming in the post of the week, but it never came. So I'm just taking his off the mantelpiece for the time being, walking around it. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, but there's a lot of heavyweight fights that will happen this year and obviously yeah. um, we just said Usyk and Chisora are now so obviously Dylan White's got his rematch with Povetkin yeah. AJ Pulev and then Tyson hopefully with Wilder December 19th so. I think I think the heavyweight's the best division out there you know bar none especially now because it's thriving um, there's no other division like it I mean it's like the other day Dillian White and Pulev um, Dillian White and Povetkin who would have seen that coming? I said, Did that shock you? It did, and it didn't, because I, I was talking to my dad before the fight, you know, the morning of the fight, we were saying who's going to win, what's going to happen, and I said, Dillian White should win, but if Povetkin knocks him out, it won't surprise me, because he's been in with everybody, he's got the experience, and the last thing to go is your power, and if he hits you on the chin right, you're going to go, I don't care who you are, and Dillian took his after ball for like that, like literally that, and he was on the floor, he was, he was knocked out before he went to the floor. And that just shows in that game, you've got to be switched on all the time, every single second. But I'm sure he'll make adjustments in his training camp, but you've just got to be careful. You've got to be switched on every single minute of the time. And maybe he should have jumped on him a little bit sooner than he did. You know, he gave him a couple of rounds to come back to his uh, his senses. But if that would have been me, I would have been all over him. You know, that age, I'd have been leaning on him because Dillian White's a big man. Mm. Should have been leaning all over him every single second, drain him out. But um, that's for him and his team to say, isn't it, really? Mm. Well, anyway, we've got three and a half months left of the year, so... You just kind of just want to write this year off, don't you? You do in a way, but there is still a lot in boxing that kind of can and possibly will potentially happen, so... In boxing, there's so much to happen now that could make up for the rest of the year. Yeah. But if that happens, I don't know, because look look where we are now. You know, the curfew's just come back into place, isn't it? Everywhere's locked down at 10 o'clock. You can't do nothing. It's I don't see us getting any further forward. Um, and I do see it going into next year as well so you just got to kind of take every day as it comes but it's hard for fighters and every other sportsman really mm. but I don't know fighters in fighters especially because it is so hard and it's hard to train without a date and when all this stuff is going on oh you're out you're not out it's been cancelled it's been rescheduled it's very hard to do so mm. I do my thoughts and prayers go out to them absolutely alright Tommy Fury thank you very much for talking to Eiffel TV as always and um, yeah, hopefully we'll get a chance to catch up with you soon. Perfect. So, Top one. Cheers, mate. Thank you very much. Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO.
And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO, free impartial advice on all your debt.